Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay, Catherine, Kylie? All right, good. Well, thank you for joining us this morning to talk about the importance of fixing Iowa's um, child sex abuse laws by closing a loophole that shields abusers in our state. I'm Senator Janet Peterson and represent um, the Northwest side of the city of Des Moines. And today we will hear from experts on civil statute of limitations laws. I'm going to open up with my opening statement, turn it over to Kylie DeWeese, an Iowa native. And from there, we'll follow up with Catherine Robb from Child USA Advocacy and then um, open it up for questions after, after that. This session, State House Republicans and Governor Reynolds have ignored real threats that harm Iowa children and instead have used school librarians, teachers, authors, and the media to fire up their extremist base. Iowa's civil statute of limitations laws allows serial child rapists to continue harming our children. Why? Respected studies indicate that 20% of Iowa girls are sexually abused before their 18th birthday. Yet under Iowa's current law, those victims are barred from seeking civil damages against their rapist by the time they turn 19 years old. Oftentimes um, under another loophole, it's even earlier than that. Other states are bringing just to justice child sex abusers while Iowa fails to act. 17 states have completely eliminated their civil statute of limitations for child sex crimes. More than half of the country has passed revival legislation with multiple states passing look back windows for child abuse victims. These look back windows give child abuse victims the opportunity at justice when the victims have matured and are able to confront their abuser. Iowa needs this legislation as well to stop child abuse, to punish institutions that cover up the crime. Is there time this session to get it done? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've seen the governor and Senate Republicans pass a complete overhaul on our state's tax code in a matter of days. They have plenty of time to get a leadership bill done to get rid of Iowa's civil statute of limitations before we adjourn for the year. They can do it as a leadership bill. Senate File 32 is written and ready to go. Um, with that, let me introduce to you um, Kylie DeWeese. She is an Iowa native who knows firsthand how abusers and schools escape justice in her home state. Kylie, I'm gonna, um, you're unmuted, great. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Kylie DeWeese, and as an Iowa native, over the course of my life, people might remember me for four main things. First, as an athlete. Second, as prom queen. Third, as a piano player who has never had a lesson but randomly started playing the day of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting and was invited to Newtown, Connecticut to play for the victim's families and hand deliver CDs. And fourth, and finally, now as a law student. What people in Iowa might not realize is that these four seemingly separate identities are woven together and around Bill 32. And here's why. That same Iowa athlete was sexually abused by an Iowa school employee as a minor. And the only reason that you might remember me as prom queen instead of someone who had lost their life from mental health because of this trauma is because of third piano. When I was being threatened by this employee not to tell, I started randomly playing piano without ever having a lesson and put my life into using my music to raise money for an Angel of Hope statue. My trauma has completely changed the entire trajectory of my life, and, and that is exactly why in a few short weeks I will be graduating law school. Now, I'm not here to talk about myself, but rather to explain what I've spent the last 11 years trying to understand, looking at laws and policies, how this happened to me and what can be done so it doesn't happen to other Iowa children in the future. This bipartisan bill Senate File 32 would eliminate the civil statute of limitations so that victims of sexual abuse as a minor are able to come forward at any time and expose the abusers and the institutions that caused this. This is crucial because the average age for someone to come forward when they were sexually abused as a minor is age 52. 
And what is a statute of limitations? I had no idea until I came to law school. There's no lawyers in my family. And by the time I got to law school, my ability to bring a suit was already waived. Now, in my mind, and many other people in Iowa might be thinking, Iowa seems to be this family Midwestern state, uh, and they probably have strong laws to protect the children, but why do I keep seeing predator after predator on the news in Iowa? Well, as it turns out, I can tell you exactly why. Iowa is actually ranked one of the six worst states when it comes to child protection laws, as it stands today. Even more surprising, 44 out of the 50 states have passed civil statute of limitations laws to either completely eliminate it or create revival windows, and yet Iowa has not. For my 11 years of research and personal health I have gone through, I can tell you firsthand that the only way to expose the abusers and institutions that allowed it to occur is by putting pressure on lawmakers now to pass Senate File 32. The Iowa legislature created great momentum last year by eliminating the criminal statute of limitations. But civil court, what this bill is about, is the only way to expose schools and sports organizations and for the victims to obtain therapy costs. Because you're, you cannot sue schools or sports organizations in criminal court. Again, something I had no idea about until I came to law school. Civil court, through this bill, is where the institutions will begin to set higher bars and higher standards to protect the children of Iowa. So what can you do or what can you tell your friends to do? Two things. First is to educate yourself and others about what the laws were because similar to me, I didn't know what the laws were in Iowa. And second is to reach out to lawmakers and express why Bill 32 is important to you. These types of child protection laws are the roots that ground your families and keep them safe. And while this law might not have anything to do with making money, protecting children is a bipartisan issue and cannot be ignored this legislative session. Thank you for your valuable time and attention to this urgent and important matter. Kylie, thank you so much for um, your voice and your advocacy and your willingness to use your experience to help other Iowans. Grateful to have you here today. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Catherine Robb, who has been working across the country through her role as executive director of Child USA Advocacy to talk about um, what she's seen around the country and what Iowa can do um, to join in the fight to protect our children. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you, Senator, and, and thank you, Kylie, for that. Um, and do I have the ability to share my screen now? Is, is that clear, I'm assuming? Um, I think it's disabled still right now. We're working on it here, Catherine. Okay, just a no second. Just give her host capability. Great, so can everyone see that okay? Yes. So I just thought I would, it might be easier uh, to share um, this way. Um, so like uh, Kylie said, um, really Iowa is way, way behind other states. And um, I just wanted to add to something very important that she said, and that is that criminal uh, statutes can only go to, to, uh, so far. You know, I, I used to say when we were still in March and March Madness that they could only take you to about half court, right? It's now baseball season, so I'm going to use a different analogy. Really, the criminal statutes can only, in terms of getting around all the bases and getting to home of justice, um, it can really only, those can only take you to about first base because you really can't hold institutions accountable. And there's a whole host of other things, too, that just make the criminal um, laws 
ineffective in a dealing in dealing with this and making institutions responsible. So I just wanted to add that on to Kylie's really wise point there. And you know, to talk about the monsters that we have um, that are protected by the archaic statute of limitations. I mean, age 19 is just one of the worst in the country that folks like this, whether they be coaches or doctors or um, you know, Larry Nasser or Jeffrey Epstein or R. Kelly, whatever they mean, this list goes on and on and on. Um, we need civil reform to expose these really bad, dangerous actors and hold institutions accountable and quite frankly, just force institutions to do the right thing. When we force institutions to do the right thing, which can only happen by civil statutes, making institutions um, be responsible with their practices, procedures, policies. It's the only way we can protect kids and institutions will only respond if they know that they can be held liable. Otherwise, there's no incentive really for them to do so and to have the best practices. Um, and as um, um, was pointed out that this is a real problem. We're talking one in five girls and one in 13 boys um, in the world are being sexually abused. There's another stat that um, most rape um, of girls happens before age 27. The vast majority are under 18. <clears throat> um, the average age uh, actually, let me just go back one more, excuse me. Um, so that number, that one in five or, or um, one in 13, that comes out to 13 and a half percent of all children will be sexually assaulted before their 18th birthday. That is a serious epidemic and problem. And by the way, most experts would argue that this number is likely low because it's really very challenging and difficult for survivors to come forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and the average age again is age 52. Why, why is that age 52 for survivors to come forward? Um, and, and the reasons are that survivors are, are struggle with shame and depression and anxiety and post-traumatic stress. And perhaps there were threats uh, by the perpetrator or they're very typically in a position of power. They are often groomed or their uh, families are even groomed. So it becomes a, a real challenge for young kids to come forward. And they typically take it until their 40s or the, again, the average is age 52. I'm also a survivor of child sexual abuse. I was abused for about eight years as a child. I didn't talk about it publicly until I was in my 40s. It's just a very hard thing to come forward. And you don't look at your watch and say, oh, okay, I need to come forward now because the clock is ticking. It's just, it just doesn't work that way. So what does that mean? It means that those short statute of limitations, and by the way, Iowa is really one of the worst, getting an F in our department, it allows those sexual perpetrators to run free among our children and thereby making the children of Iowa um, open and suspect to, uh, dangers by these monsters. So again, the age cap in Iowa, very low, one of the lowest in the country, um, is a, an impossible time to expect someone who has been raped, um, sodomized, or sexually assaulted as a minor to come forward and to talk to people and to maybe expose these hidden predators, these bad institutions. It's, it's just not consistent with the science. This is not a Democrat problem, an independent problem, a Republican problem. This is a nonpartisan problem that is harming all children across the political spectrum, all religious entities, <clears throat> all races. It is a national problem that should have a nonpartisan response. If you look at this chart right here, we look at the best on the right and the worst on the left, and you can see Iowa is right there as one of the worst in the, in the country. If we look to the far right, we have states doing wonderful work, whether it's in Louisiana or Minnesota or uh, New Hampshire or Vermont or Colorado. Many of these states are just making great strides because they're understanding how, what an epidemic that we have. <clears throat> Oops, excuse me. 
One of the things we do at Child US Advocacy is we educate lawmakers, lawmakers on the science of trauma and really what happens in the mind of a, ch of a child and you know how sort of the architecture of the brain of a child is affected by high levels of cortisol um, and how it can really change the way uh, children can function, whether it be in the home or in school, um, not to mention the psychological trauma as well that these kids experience. Again, the the data is really clear. Lawmakers are lis listening, except, unfortunately, for Iowa. And here's just a list of some of the harms that children go through and some of the effects of this type of abuse. <clears throat> the list is long uh, and not, not exhausted at all here. Um, we also uh, look to the best statute of limitations across the country. And I believe, as Senator Peterson mentioned, that right now we have 17 states that have completely eliminated, uh, uh, excuse me, states and territories that have eliminated the statute of limitation for child sexual abuse claims. And we have 27 states and territories that have opened either a revival or a window legislation that allows those who are barred to now come forward and, and open the doors to the courthouses and name their abusers and therefore make kids safer. And here's just a brief window of time from 2002 to the present of what states are stepping up and really listening to the science um, and responding with reform to their statute of limitations. This represents a national movement um, and we sure hope that Iowa gets in line and follows this movement. The other thing I'd like to mention quickly is that the burden of child sexual abuse that it has, the financial burden, excuse me, that it has on the, on the state of Iowa and its taxpayers. This epidemic of child sexual abuse burdens our educational systems, our medical systems, law enforcement, social services, our workforce, um, our penal system. So it really has a devastating sort of financial heavy burden that really doesn't belong on the state taxpayers. Really, we really need to shift it to the bad guys. And here's just some interesting um, studies about what the average lifetime cost of, of abuse is. And again, we have it at about $282,000. And these numbers, again, are likely low. We also have a really alarming figure that was uh, done in a study in 2015, which shows that the cost of uh, child sexual abuse is in the billions. And this is an, these are annual numbers. Um, this is an, a really important chart and a point that I make when I testify all over the country is that really when we think of statute of limitation reform, it really helps everyone, the common good of Iowa, right? So the first thing it does is I identify those hidden sexual predators and the institutions that are um, likely concealing them, right? So it lets the public know, right? So it also shifts the cost of abuse from the victims and perhaps their families to the taxpayers in I uh, Iowa to those who cause the, pro the problem. So we take that shift away from victims and taxpayers to the bad guys who caused it. And finally, it educates the public about the prevalence, the si signs of trauma, the signs of abuse, and the impacts. So families and guardians and teachers and coaches can be more aware of this problem. So some of the arguments that we get across the country that are failing consistently right now um, is, you know, the sky is falling if we change our statute of limitations. And, and here are just some of the arguments, and I'm just going to sort of go through them very quickly. A lot of um, states will say, their lawmakers and legislative leaders will say, hey, this isn't what other states are doing. This is uncommon. We're going to be an outlier. I've already pointed out that we are, uh, that Iowa would not be an outlier in this, in, in this regard, right? Most states are making changes. And again, 17 uh, jurisdictions have eliminated, 27 have revived. I'll also get the argument is, wait a minute, wait a minute, what about due process? This isn't fair, right? And so what I argue is that, look it, um, due process is not an absolute right. And we also have safety nets of the rules of civil procedure and our rules of evidence um, that will protect defendants. They often say that, look at um, as well as a purpose, we don't want faded memories and stale claims and all of that. 
I couldn't agree more as an attorney, as an American, as a citizen who believes in our uh, justice system. But what I tell folks is that these are not typical tort claims, right? And that our laws are based on notions of justice and common sense and sound public policy to protect our children. And also plaintiffs have to prove their cases as uh, Kaylee now knows that they have to survive that 12B motion to dismiss. And quite frankly, lawyers won't take weak cases, right? So again, we have those safety nets, right? I also hear we don't do this for other types of torts. Well, the argument is these are not slip and fall cases. These are not fender bender cases or trespass cases or breach of contract. We are talking about the rape and sodomy and sexual abuse of our children. These are not typical tort cases. And, you know, really, why should we have a public policy that allows sexual predators to walk free and be protected by the passage of time for the very silence that they create and cause in their victims? That just doesn't make sense. That's not good, sound public policy. We all finally get the argument, oh my God, our courts are gonna be flooded. Now we've watched this happen in other states and, and I point out that heavily populated states like New York and California who have passed window legislation, California's passed window legislation multiple times. Uh, they're really a leader in that regard. Um, we just haven't seen this. So these arguments that we hear are just sky falling. My goodness, um, you know, the sun's not going to rise the next morning. And they're just false and alarmist in many ways. Um, unfortunately, Iowa continues to be one of the very worst in the state right now on exposing those sexual uh, predators and um, giving justice to victims. Um, and the only way to do this is to extend the statute of limitations and open up some sort of revival language, which um, uh, this bill 32 would do. If there's any questions, I'm happy to um, answer them. Um, I know that was a bit of data, but I tried to go through it pretty quickly. Thank you, Catherine. I think we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, if you have a question, you can either put it in the chat or uh, raise your hand and we'll... Um, okay, it looks like there's a question from Stephen Greber Miller. Stephen, go ahead with your question. We'll take you off of mute. Hi, Senator. Thanks for doing the call. Um, sure. I'm wondering uh, what conversations you've had with your colleagues this year and just kind of how passing... Um, the, the criminal statute of limitations legislation has kind of changed the way your colleagues are talking about this. Is there more appetite for something like this now? Is there less because they feel like maybe it's taken care of? Just would like to hear your thoughts. Um, well, the criminal um, statute of limitations is completely different than the civil statute of limitations. And um, there is no capability for someone who um, has already um, had already gotten out of the um, criminal statute of limitations to go back. Um, so um, I think the age was 32 um, and beyond. Though all of those Iowans don't have access to justice, as well as you don't have access to seek civil damages beyond your. 19th birthday. And there's also a loophole in Iowa law that allows therapists, counselors, and school employees only, there's only a five year, you only have a five year um, um, timeline to um, seek civil damages from the time you end therapy or leave the school. So for some Iowans, they may not even have until their 19th birthday. You could you know, technically have a kindergartner who's abused in kindergarten, um, you know, they would uh, lose their ability to seek damages by the time they're 10 years old. Um, I've spoken um, with my colleagues on the floor multiple times. I'm actually um, enlisting the help of the media and Iowans to help put pressure 
on lawmakers that we need to get this done for our children. Um, I know my caucus is in full support. I believe that there are Republicans that support it. We need um, Jake Chapman and um, Jack Whitber, and we need Pat Grassley and um, Winshittle in the House and the governor, those five lawmakers to step up and say, we can do this, let's get this done for Iowa. Are there other questions? Okay, it looks like I don't have any more questions. Um, let me give one more uh, minute here in case there's anyone else. All right, well, I think we can wrap up. Oh, looks like there's one from Katie Akin. Katie, um, go ahead with your question. Hi, sorry, I'm right under the wire, I know. Um, I'm just curious if there's any other legislation that you have been following this session that you think is at all helpful or a step forward, even if it doesn't address this exact legal issue. Like I know the House passed a bill that changes the way that the Board of Educational Examiners deals with some you know, um, sexual abuse issues in schools. I'm just curious if there's anything else in this realm that you've been following that you're either enthusiastic about or maybe less enthusiastic about. Thank you. Yeah, you know, until the civil statute of limitations is fixed, um, our um, survivors of child sex abuse just don't have access to um, um, justice. And I believe that that is absolutely wrong. Iowans can't continue to pretend that we're a great place to raise children and families when we shut the door to justice and allow predators to continue, you know, driving school buses and serving as pediatricians and coaching our kids in unregulated youth activities. We need to get serious about this. And so far this session, we've not seen um, lawmakers get a bill through that actually will fix the problems that our state is, has. And until that's done, Iowa won't be a safe place to raise children. I'd like to add something to that too, to Katie's Go ahead, Kai. question. Um, the bill Katie was referring to was introduced by Representative Height, and it is a great bill, and it was great to see the House come together at both Democrats and Republicans to enact this bill. Um, and I think that's a great introduction, but this bill, Senate File 32, would um, do what, what they are trying to do, but in a much, much, much larger capacity because it's not just about reporting, it's about exposing and creating standards and institutions and sports organizations um, recognizing that they, victims are able to file suit. So then they decide to raise their hiring standards for coaches or raise their hiring standards for schools. So eliminating the, the civil statute of limitations would do um, what that bill is doing for reporting, but in a much, much larger capacity. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Let me check the chat one more time. All right, looks like we're good. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Catherine and Kylie, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your stories. Um, and um, to the media who are on the call, I hope that you will help us drive this conversation out to Iowans. Um, and we need your help. We need your help to get this done. And, um, and uh, let's just keep fighting for Iowa's kids. I have had more Iowans come to me and I have promised them I will not give up on them. This is a battle that Iowans need to win for our children. So thanks everybody. And um, um, look forward to staying in touch with you as we wrap out the final days of session. Bye-bye.